meet and welcome back. We have had quite a week. Everybody seems to be doing so well on the building of the power base that we've been working on. Uh, remember that people are going coming into this training at different times. And so there's even though these these lessons are sort of in uh, real time here, uh, please feel free to to use the, utilize our forum, our discussion forum for your support. And that uh, address is the URL for that is the DCW dot nine 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 dot o r g again t h e d c w dot nine 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 o r g uh, get on there post away don't be shy we're we're all in the same boat and we're all there to help one another and that's what we're that's what we're all about all right so we did have a couple of questions this week and I wanted to get those taken care of before we got into the lesson all right so Ella posted on the forum she said that she was wondering if anyone has any insights. Uh, this is her speaking now. I, I have been doing my will list and meditations for the fire body, but I have no inclination to use my athame. I found a black-handled knife that I've never used in my cupboard, which I intended for this purpose, but it is still lying there. I feel I should at least meditate with it. I have not consecrated it at least once to find out for myself if there is a difference. I've always loved visualizing and do not find this challenging. If I don't physically meditate with an athame, is there a visualization I can do using my arm instead? And if so, which arm? Is there any reason some tools are attractive and others are not? Okay, that's a good question. Okay, remember we said that, that you do not feel um, that any of the tools are mandatory, Ella and everybody else listening. It's not that, that, that you have to use an athame. However, you may want to, you may want to look at if you're, if you if you're averse to using the athame, you may want to look at what the athame represents to you and see if, if there isn't something in there that you might want to just dig a little deeper because it could mean, and I'm not, I don't know you, so I'm not saying that this is true. It could mean for many of us, an aversion to an athame oftentimes indicates an aversion to our own power. And again, I'm not saying that this is true for you because it's, uh, this is just a generalization, but, but you may want to look at that as a possibility. What I would recommend if I were you, and again, do what you will, is that you go ahead and consecrate an athame anyway and use one for a while, for, for several months, just to see what, what's going on there. See, see if, the, if there isn't something within your fire body, uh, within your, your sense of will, within your sense of power that, that isn't uncovered. Um, I, I don't ever want anybody to do anything that is um, un too uncomfortable for them. It's just like an exercise. Mild discomfort, sweet discomfort is a good thing because it, it makes us grow. But nothing should ever hurt. Nothing should ever be scary. Nothing should ever terrorize you, traumatize you. That's totally antithetical to what we're doing and counterproductive. However, it's you may want to take a look at that as, um, as something that, that, that you might want to investigate a little bit more. In regards to now, now again, if you if you meditate on, it, you think, eh, I don't want a athame. Fine, don't use one. As far as which arm to use, what I, the way I was taught, and there's several schools of thought about this, but the way I was taught, the way I teach, is if you were to eat a piece of fruit, such as an apple, which hand would you use? Which hand would would you use to eat that piece of fruit? Um, not necessarily what what hand do you hold your fork in, because in some cultures it's always the left the left hand, and some cultures it's always the right hand. So, which hand would you instinctively go pick up a piece of fruit and nourish yourself with? That's probably a good power hand for you to use for your athame. There's some other ideas for that. Um, Later on, we'll, 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 we'll discuss the, the sending and the receiving hands. But as a general rule, that's a good one. All right, let's see what else do we have. Winter says, I've been doing the candle flame meditation and will focus every night. I've been getting increasingly more exhausted every day. Is it normal for this to be unusually draining physically, even when I'm getting eight hours of sleep? Or am I just coming down with something? Well, you could have just been coming down with something. That's, that's true. 
If you feel any sense of strain with any magical exercise, stop. Just stop and 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 go and pare it down. So if you're um if you like just the concentration exercises, if you're feeling physically drained by doing a concentration exercise, try doing the concentration exercise for five seconds. See how that feels every day for five seconds and then move it up to 10 seconds and then 15. See how that feels for you. Build things up gradually. We never, ever, ever want a sense of strain with anything in magic. Great questions, though. Let's see now. Um... Amethyst says that I finally listened to lesson six last night and started my seven days today. At first, I found it difficult to come up with seven things for my will list, but once I stopped thinking so hard, they came naturally. I completed my item on the list for today, and while it would be easy for me to continue on the list, I decided not to. I believe it is better for my training if I concentrate on doing one thing at a a time and not just getting them over with at once. I need to create discipline, and I think this will come knowing... I have one item I must complete before the day is done. I struggle with adult ADHD, and I think this routine will keep me on track, and I'll be better off for it. Actually, that wasn't a question, was it? Um, But I said it anyway. Amethyst, you're awesome. We love you. That's, That's great. That's absolutely right. A little bit every day is so much healthier than trying to just tackle everything all at once. It's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful insights. See the kind of stuff that, that that's on this forum? These people are amazing. I, I'm so blessed to have such great people working with me here. Let's see, what else do we have here? We didn't get any questions on the water body, which was last week yet, so I don't know um, if everybody's just doing well with it or maybe they're not on it yet. Either way is fine. If you have any questions or issues with the water body week, please feel free to talk to us. Somebody said, um, I can't find the thing. Somebody was, I can't find the question. Somebody was having trouble with visualization. And um, it's great because we're going to talk about that today. So let's not worry about that right at this second because I'm going to get into that. This week we're doing the air body. So again, with everything uh, in this training, I recommend that you can listen to whatever you want, whenever you want. But as far as taking the training and doing the exercises, I really do recommend that you do things sequentially, especially when you're building your power base. So after you've done a week of the fire and a week of the water, now it's time to do a week with air. On the witch's pyramid or the pyramid of power, air is anchored to the side of the pyramid, which is called imagination. Imagination. The root of the word imagination comes from the same as image or to make pictures. So visualization is an important factor in the building of the air body and a very important factor in the working of magic. Let's talk about what we mean when we say visualization, however. Some people get really caught up in the actual seeing things on the TV screen of their mind. Some people are very good at doing this, and some people are not very good at doing this, and I don't believe that seeing actual pictures is necessarily an indication of how effective you are as a magician. It is a skill that will be developed over time with practice, regardless. However, when we talk about visualization in, the, in terms of imagination in, in the witch's pyramid, we're talking about becoming being able to conjure an image in your mind to conjure an experience within your mind so i'm going to be very clear here that if you are a more feeling person and not as visual of a person then you're going to be creating a sense of something more than a picture if you are somebody that's more audible you're going to be creating a sonic environment in your mind more than a picture if you are a person that that is um, that is more s- sensual, you are going to be, uh, you know, with a, with a sense of touch. You're going to definitely work better with with physical props to create a sense of the of of the of the image that you are put, putting in your mind. So, is what we're mo- more in. What's more important than actually being able to see a picture, although that ability is important and it will grow over time, I promise you, 
don't get caught up on the word visualization. Let's do this. Just take a minute. If you're driving, don't close your eyes. But if you, if you can, close your eyes for a moment. And I just want you to, to do this. I want you to imagine that somebody is baking your favorite pie. And you can smell the pie. And you know the pie is cooling now on the counter. Now let's say that the, the pie is cool enough to cut. And you see this person cutting a piece of this pie. Maybe it's cherry, maybe it's apple, but it's a warm fruit pie. Because I want you to see that piece of pie coming out of the pie plate and some steam rising up off of it as it's put onto your plate. And now they're opening up a container of vanilla ice cream. And it's not just any vanilla ice cream. It's the world's greatest French vanilla bean ice cream. It is, it's the kind of vanilla ice cream that dreams are made of. And you're, and you're seeing them scooping into this vanilla ice cream, which is the consistency that is so perfect. It's not too hard. It's not too soft. And you can, and this vanilla ice cream is just perfect. And they're putting this huge scoop of vanilla ice cream on this warm pie. And you see that ice cream start to melt just a little bit over the pie. And you can smell it. Now you're going to take a fork and you're going to take a piece of the pie on the fork with just a little bit of that ice cream. Okay, now open your mouth and just put that bite of dessert in your in your mouth. You can, oh my gosh, the, the, the pie crust, the crust is so flaky. It's just the right temperature uh, uh, in, in the pie. The fruit is just right. And then there's just that, that vanilla ice cream is just melting down all around your, your mouth. Do you see what I'm saying? That's visualization. Maybe you saw it. Maybe you didn't. But you got a sense. Now, unless you really hate pie, then do it, you know, do it with something else. Do it with something that, that you do like. But that's the best way for you to, to understand visualization is to daydream about things that, that are enjoyable to you. And just notice what, what, you're, what you do. Notice how your mind works. That's visualization. That's imagination. All right. So now when we're doing spell work, it's very important that our imagination be extremely well developed so that when, say, you're doing a, 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 a magical operation like a spell for, I don't know, maybe you, maybe a new job, you'd want to be able to to see yourself in that job doing that, that perfect career that you want to have, that you want to be doing. With the, uh, surrounded by the, the, the right kind of people, making the right kind of money, contributing something great to the world, and being compensated in a way that, that is abundant for you. So this week, when we're building the air body, we're going to be exploring your creativity. Now notice how each week, the different element that rules the different bodies it has a different personality. The fire body was definitely different than the water body. Well, the air body is also very different because remember, the element of air represents our mind, our thoughts, and thoughts are very airy. Any of you who've tried any of the meditation exercises know that the way that the mind works is it is it's like it's, is it's like air. It's all over the place. It doesn't want to stay focused. An undisciplined mind is very flighty. So what we're going to do is we're just, we're going to have another week where we are discovering and building our body, our air body this week. So every morning for the last week, you've been recording your dreams. If you'd like to still continue to do that, that's fine. But you have another morning exercise. So if you don't want to do your dreams this week, that's fine too. But if you are getting a lot out of that and you want to continue that, that's fine. You can do the following exercise once you've finished recording your dreams. Do the dreams first if you're going to do your dreams. The next thing I want you to do is first thing in the morning, I want you to also, this is another writing exercise. I want you to have a full page or more of stream of consciousness writing. I want you to just write down everything that's in your mind. Everything that's in your mind. 
first thing in the morning, stream of consciousness, don't edit it. If it's weird, if it's unusual, if it's bizarre, that's awesome. Whatever's in your mind, if it's mundane, that's awesome too. But you do not stop writing until you get to the bottom of that page. Now, this is very similar to the morning pages, which is um, part of uh, the artist's way training. It's very similar to that. But we, we only ask you to do stream of consciousness for one page. The, the reason why we're doing this is to start to open up your mind, to start open up, opening up your creativity this week. For your meditation exercise this week, what you're going to be doing is you are going to be breathing through your nose. And you're going to be just following your breath. And if you can keep that up for 20 minutes, that's great. Because your breath and your mind are interrelated. And you'll notice that the more focused on your breathing you are, the more focused your mind is. The more your mind wanders, the less focused on your breathing you are, and the less you breathe. So the more that you take that breath in and are conscious of that breath, the more focused your thoughts become. So at least five minutes a day, or if possible, up to 20 minutes a day, for your meditation, you're going to be following your breath in and out through the nose, if possible. Unless you're congested, obviously, then then you can use your mouth breathing. But the nose breathing is... Um, is is a little bit better for several reasons. One is it filters the air and it warms the air so it's healthier for your body and also is it 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 starts to stimulate your psychic senses. Remember, this is not an act of will. This is an act of intellect. So you're you are noticing, you are studying your breathing and you're studying the the pattern of your mind. Your mind will wander. It is meant to wander. That's, it, that's how the mind operates. As your mind wanders, remind yourself gently to come back to your breathing. And you may have to do that over and over and over again. But notice your reaction to that. It's very important that we start to foster an attitude of gentleness with ourselves and these disciplines. So be very, very gentle with yourself as you redirect your mind to come back to your breathing over and over again. Another exercise that would be extremely helpful for you this week, on the, the fire body week, you started to do physical exercise. On the water body week, you added to physical exercise the increase of intake of actual drinking water and also consecrating at least one glass of water with blessings for yourself so that you could actually internally take in those blessings. This week, you're going to continue doing those two things. You're going to continue exercising and drinking water. And now what we're going to do is we're going to actually do some deep breathing exercises. So the best time of day to do the deep breathing exercises is early in the morning, but any time is fine. If you can do it outdoors, so much the better. But if you can't, that's fine. First thing I want you to be able to do is understand how to take a deep breath. And one of the ways, the the easiest ways to do this is to actually bend forward at the waist Bend forward at the waist. If you need to bend your legs to protect your lower back, please do so. Bend forward at the waist while you're standing up. If you need to bend your knees, that's fine. So that your back is somewhat perpendicular to the floor. Put your hands on your navel area and then take a breath. You'll notice that automatically your abdomen moves out because you have put yourself in a position where abdominal breathing is absolutely necessary. Once you've discovered what abdominal breathing feels like, or often called diaphragmatic breathing, return to an upright position and see if you can recreate that experience for yourself. Breathing in while you feel that abdominal region expand. While you're doing these deep breathing exercises, you want to have a gentle lift in your sternum. So you're going to be taking deep breaths in through your nose, while you feel your navel extending, 
and you're going to be taking your exhales either through your nose or through your mouth. I prefer to keep all breathing through my nose on these exercises, but that's up to you. And you gently feel your navel coming back in toward your spine, just the navel just gliding, drawing itself in toward the spine to press out the excess air. And you take your breaths in and out. Now, for these deep breathing exercises, this is different from your meditation. Your meditation, I don't want you to, to futz with your breath at all. I just want you to notice your natural breathing. But for the deep breathing exercises, I want you to take from 10 to 20 breaths. And I want you to be able to experience what a full breath feels like. So that you feel like your breath is coming in, starting at the navel. And remember, you have a slight lift at the sternum. And the full breath ends by having the upper chest expand just a bit. Keep your upper chest lifted slightly without any force or strain. And as you exhale, feel like your navel is gliding in toward the spine to complete the exhale. And then take another deep breath in the same way that you started. Do, like I said, 10 to 20 deep breaths. The idea is not to hyperventilate. It's to breathe deeply. If you ever feel dizzy or lightheaded, Go ahead and stop, and then start it again when you feel normal again. You should be able to eventually breathe like this for over an hour at a time without anything except for good feelings. So what's happening with this is you are starting to move magical energy with the exercises, the physical exercise from the fire week. You are, um, your body is able to conduct the energy properly because you have hydrated your body properly with the water intake from the water week. And now you are regulating that energy flow with your air body. You are actually taking prana in. And remember, prana is what is the life-giving force of the oxygen. Prana comes actually from the sun. And the, 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 sun is char- the sun charges all particles of air, whether you're indoors or out. But if you can be out of doors in the morning, your prana is going to be at its highest levels. So that's why we recommend, if possible, to do your deep breathing exercises out of doors and in the early morning, if possible. And again, you want to you keep those, those breaths as deep as possible, but without any sense of force or strain, as in with, as with everything in magic. Finally, what I want you to do this week is to have some sense of creativity. This can take any form you decide. You can write some songs. You can write some poetry. You can paint a picture. You can just take a new route to work every day. The idea is to keep your mind as open as possible. We want you to look for things in a new way. We want you to see things in a new way. Look at things from as many perspectives as possible. Try to find a way to create something this week. Create anything you like. You don't have to show anybody. It might be a poem, like I said, or it might be a song, or it might be a piece of sculpture, or maybe you're good with, with, with wood, or maybe you're good with sewing. But whatever it is, whatever your, your creative impulses are, maybe you haven't done this in years, but dust it off, whatever that thing is, and I want you to delve into it full on this week and dedicate a good chunk of time to something very creative for yourself. If you can do something creative every day, so much the better but at least dedicate some time, some significant amount of time to a creative endeavor this week without judgment and without looking at it as whether it's good or bad, but just as an exercise in building your magical air body. So just as a recap, for your morning exercise, you're going to write Stream of Consciousness one full page of whatever's on your mind. First thing in the morning, For your meditation, you're simply going to be noticing your breath and keeping your focus on your breath and how your mind operates. As your mind wanders, gently bring it back again and again to noticing your breath. Preferably in the morning and outdoors, you're going to be doing 
deep breathing exercises, as I described, diaphragmatic breathing from 10 to 20 breaths minimum a day. Again, do not strain, and if you feel any discomfort, stop. This is a week that you are going to do something very creative for yourself. You're going to dust off those paints. You're going to get, you're going to dust off the keys of that piano. Whatever it is that you do that you've always liked to do or that you've always wanted to do and never gave yourself the permission to do it, you're going to do it this week. Now, if this wasn't enough for you, this is also a great week for you to read a piece of, of literature. It doesn't have to be hard literature. It's, it can be anything at all, but something that is going to be a narrative so that it starts to get your visualization faculties primed. Or you can read or tell or listen to stories, audio books, or the, the Celtic Myths pod show is a great way to listen to stories. But you want to be able to start to gently visualize it's not a hard thing that I want you to do this week. I don't want you to push, put pressure on yourself to make yourself visualize a sphere or make yourself visualize a dot or make yourself visualize red or make yourself visualize anything. But gently and organically allow yourself to notice what you experience when visualization comes up for you. And that is oftentimes the very thing that when you're reading a story or listening to a story, very much like what we just did with that pie example, that's what visualization means to you. And I want you to, to be able to start to be comfortable with the fact that you do have the power of visualization, no matter what anybody has told you or no matter what you've told yourself. So this is going to be a fun week and I hope you enjoy it. Please keep at it. I know this is easy to, to stop. You can do this. Remember, today starts the center, the middle of the building of your power base. So you're almost halfway there. So you can get through this. This is fun. This is, this is enjoyable. And you're going to be so glad you did it because you're going to be the most powerful witch you ever did meet when you're finished with this. I'm so happy to be able to be here. And I love all of you. And I love hearing from you. And until next time... Love and many blessings, Mary Part.